Why, hello, hello, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mrs. Patterson and Mrs. Felix coming at you from our virtual teleschool. This week is week three. This is day three. This should be Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we made it to April and we are doing awesome. And I'm really, really proud of you all. So all this week, we are working on lesson nine, determining the theme of a story. So we've had a couple of words that we've been tackling. Our academic talk words include the word theme, which is the moral, the message, or the lesson of a story. We also went over the word infer, or to make an inference, which simply means to make an educated guess based off of the clues that the text has provided. So all this week, our goal is to tackle the standard ELAGSE 4 RL2, but what that simply means is that our goal is to understand the theme of a story is simply the larger message or lesson about life. But not only that, but when we are able to determine the theme of a story, we can do that by interpreting the different details that are given in the text. So that's our goal all this week. Yesterday we read a fable called The Two Travelers. Today we are gonna be switching genres and we are going to read a different category of text. Today we're gonna to read a historical fiction story. What that means is that part of this story is going to be based off of something real that happened in history. Here we're gonna be talking about living in Nazi run Germany. So that is something that really happened around the time of the Holocaust in World War II. So we're gonna be seeing what happens through the perspective of a fictional character, a made up character named Claudine and how she uses some tacks to attack these Nazi Germans. So we're gonna follow along. There will be some words that you might not know entirely what they mean. We're gonna come across the word occupation or occupied Germany, which just means the time where the Nazis took over and ruled. We also will see the word ammunition, which is what is utilized to fuel weapons or to refill different weapons. And then we'll see other war-like terms such as the front, which is where all of the war is happening, all of the engagement, and other words like troops or the soldiers that are part of it. So don't let these unknown words stop you. Don't let them hold you up. As we read, please place a check mark above any of the confusing words that we come across, and then do your best to look inside, look around, and look beyond each of these unknown words or phrases because there's going to be some context clues that are going to help us figure out those unknown words. While I read, I would like for you to read along. This story is called Claudine's Tack Attack by Nadine Blank and we are going to read from this historical fictional story. Paragraph one. For three long years, the Nazis had occupied France. By now, everyone in my village was used to German trucks driving through, carrying ammunition and supplies to the front to supply Nazi soldiers in their battles against the American troops. From her window, my friend Claudine and I watched glumly as the trucks roared and rumbled by. Too bad we can't slow them down, I remarked one day. Claudine's eyes became thoughtful. Maybe we can. She shared her idea and ran to her father's workshop. These might work, she announced, holding out a can of short, extremely sharp steel tacks. Papa uses them to shingle roofs. Heading back to the road, I had second thoughts. How could two 11-year-olds slow down a war machine with a bunch of tacks? Still, I followed Claudine up the hill to a spot above the road and crouched behind an old stone wall. All too soon, we heard the rumble of engines, so he raced to the road. Like this, whispered Claudine. She began fleeing handfuls of tacks onto the pavement, so I threw handfuls too. Then, just in time, we ducked out of sight. Blam! The exploding tire sounded like a gunshot. Then another, blam! Two blowouts, Claudine whispered as we crept away. After dark, we crept back toward the road. The German soldiers were still struggling with the heavy rubber tires. Better yet, the road was so narrow that the other trucks could not pass. 
Claudine and I had delayed 12 trucks for half the day. That is our story of Claudine's tack attack. So we had a lot going on in this story and let's just check to make sure that we really comprehended everything that was going on. So our first comprehension question to see if you guys understood our story and what we just read. Where does the story take place? So what is our setting? Where and when is the story happening? If you understood our story and you read correctly, this story takes place in France, but not only the location where France, the story takes place, but also when. The story is taking place during the Nazi occupation, during the time that the Nazis took over France and lived there and held down the law. Question two to see if we all really understood our story. Who are the main characters? Remember, this is the question we have to always figure out when we are figuring out our theme. We have to start by knowing who is our main character. And in this story, we have more than one. If you read it correctly, ladies and gentlemen, you should have answered that our main characters are not only Claudine, but also our narrator, the person who is telling the story. We know that this is first person because we see Claudine and I watched glumly. I remarked, I followed Claudine. So we know that Claudine is an additional character, but we also have our main character, the narrator, who we are seeing from her point of view. What do they want to do? What do Claudine and our narrator want to do in this story? I hope that you said their goal was to slow down German supply trucks. They let us know that early on. They're trying to figure out, well, it's too bad we can't slow them down. And then Claudine gets an idea and says, maybe we can. So their goal is to slow down these German supply trucks. And our very last question for comprehension, just to make sure that everybody is on the same page. What is the story mostly about? So if we had to summarize this into one short, to the point, very direct main idea, what is this all about? I would say that Claudine's Tack Attack is all about how two 11-year-old French children use tacks to delay German supply trucks. So that's how we would answer those comprehension questions and make sure that we truly understand what's going on. Now let's dive further into this because we know that our goal for this week is to determine the theme of a story. Well, now we've read our story and we need to answer some questions that are gonna help us with this. If you are following along with the Nearpod, this is gonna be question, or sorry, page number 138. This is a draw it page, which means that you can take either the highlighter or you can take your text box or the tool that simply lets you draw on the screen and you can circle your correct answers in this Nearpod. So we're gonna answer questions one and two at this time. Please follow along as I read out loud. It says, think, use what you learned from reading the story to respond to the following questions. Question number one, which statement best explains why the girls wanted to slow down the German trucks? Remember, whenever we see a question that says best, there might be another answer out there that looks very good, but there's one that is a little bit better. So we wanna read through every single answer choice and slash and trash what we can until we are down to our final options. So once again, the question is, which statement best explains why the girls wanted to slow down the German trucks? We have the option A. The girls did not want the Nazi trucks to take French supplies back to Germany. B, the girls wanted to make trouble for the German troops who were occupying France. C, the girls wanted to help the American troops steal German supplies that were being carried on the trucks. Or D, the girls wanted to slow down trucks delivering supplies to soldiers who were fighting American troops. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, whether or not you are following along with a printed out packet or you are utilizing our Nearpod, please go ahead and select your correct answer for number one. Question number two, it reads, which statement best describes how events in paragraphs five, six, and seven are important to the theme of the story? 
So let's break this question down. It wants to know which one of these is best, is the best way that we can describe the events. We know that events are what is happening in the story. It tells us directly that we need to go back and read paragraphs five, six, and seven, and see how these paragraphs are important to the theme of our story. So before even looking at the answers, I'm gonna go back and read over paragraphs five, six, and seven, and figure out what theme, what lesson, what moral, what message can I learn from this based on what our main characters are doing, what problem they come across, how they solve it, and then how can I make that lesson general so that anyone can learn that theme? Paragraph five, heading back to the road, I had second thoughts. How could two 11 year old girls slow down a war machine with a bunch of tacks? Still, I followed Claudine up the hill to a spot above the road and crouched behind an old stone wall. All too soon, we heard the rumble of engines, so he raced to the road. Like this, whispered Claudine. She began flinging handful of tacks uh, onto the pavement. So I threw handfuls too. Then just in time, we ducked out of sight. Blam! The exploding tire sounded like a gunshot. Then another. Blam! Two blowouts, Claudine whispered as we crept away. After dark, we crept back toward the road. The German soldiers were still struggling with the heavy rubber tires. Better yet, the road was so narrow that the other trucks could not pass. Claudine and I had delayed 12 trucks for half the day. So we're following along with question two. It asks us to reread paragraphs five, six, and seven and tell how those paragraphs are important to the theme of our story. Well, what I just saw was that two 11-year-old girls had a goal in mind and they wanted to delay these trucks. They were brave, and even though one of the girls had second thoughts, meaning that she was nervous and really didn't want to do it, she still followed through, and both of them, at 11 years old, were able to hold off half of those supply trucks from going to deliver it to the Nazis. So they made a big difference, and our question wants to know, how did those paragraphs help us with our lesson or our theme? Answer A to paragraph two reads, they show that the girls grew tired of looking out a window. B, these paragraphs show that the girls passed up a chance to be brave. C, they show that the girls' dangerous risks paid off. Or D, they show that the girls' clever plan was only temporary. Once again, choose your answer at this time, either on Nearpod or on the printed out packet. Select either A, B, C, or D for which ones paragraphs five, six, and seven help to explain the importance of the theme in our story. Question three wants you to talk with either your parent, guardian, or sibling about the theme of the story. Identify important details about the events and the girl's motivation. If we think back to describing characters, we know that motivation is the reason behind a character's actions. So this question wants you to talk about the girl's motivation and behavior that help to reveal, help to uncover our theme or our moral or our lesson. Organize the information in the theme chart that is provided. We did not give you all pages 141, so simply talk about this with either your parent or guardian. The very last part asks you to use the information, use the information in your chart to write about the theme or lesson that can be learned from the girl's experience. Support your response with details from the story. Remember with everything, there can always be more than one theme, but you have to back it up with details or with sentences from the story. So once you finish up answering questions one through four, you are done with your packet work for the day. We still have an exit ticket in the Google Forms for you to go over. And additionally, there is something called a theme cartoon that you all are gonna complete on Friday. But we want you to start thinking about a cartoon that could describe a life lesson, whether that's what goes around, comes around, slow and steady, wins the race, be kind. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all, but think of a theme and you are gonna create a cartoon on Friday that is going to show this theme. So start thinking about it today because your exit ticket is going to ask you about that theme. So you should be completing up your packet either through your Nearpod or the actual printed out version. You are then going to work on your exit ticket as well. And then finish out today, of course, with your eye ready lesson. Make sure every single day you are doing one eye ready reading lesson.
That's all I have for you all today on Wednesday, April 1st. I will see you again tomorrow as we continue learning how to determine the theme of a story. Have a great one.